Hey there interwebs, I hope you're all doing well. Um, so this is not a video that I expected to be <laughs> spending my time making today, uh, but having sat with it for a little while this morning, I've decided that I do want to address it, and that is uh, to talk about James Somerton's latest apology video that he released uh, as of the, the morning that I'm filming this, where he spends uh, a decent chunk of time at the first few minutes of the video uh, not only talking about me, but uh, apologizing to me directly for um, some stuff that happened between the two of us about a year or so ago, even before the uh, plagiarism accusations came out from H. Bomber guy. And frankly, I, I've debated whether I wanted to say anything at all in response to that, mainly because, you know, I've made two videos about James Somerton on this channel, um, one directly about his sort of plagiarism accusations that were leveled against him after the H-Bomber Guy video, and then another one in response to his um, apology video that he released before where he discussed his, um, and content warning here, he discussed his um, suicidal ideation and, and uh, going into the hospital. And frankly, I wanted those to just be the end of my discussion on this because obviously I've had feelings broiled up in this, but I'm conflicted about the whole thing of like just becoming drama and all of that jazz. And so, you know, I kind of figured if he was going to make another apology, I was just going to let other people take it. But considering the fact that he spent the beginning of this apology video talking to me directly. It led to me ultimately having some really conflicted feelings that I, I really want to present to everybody because I think if I don't say them, then I don't think anyone's really gonna dive into it because I, I am very conflicted on how he not only uh, discusses the, the apology, but also where he sort of places the discussion of me within a video where he is apologizing, presumably uh, towards everybody, um, and uh, about the plagiarism that he he's accused of and admits to in this apology video. So I wanna get into all of that, and I think the best place to start is going to be just me giving a brief rundown from my perspective of the stuff between the two of us, so that then I can kind of give a better uh, discussion about what he talks about in this video. So uh, to go back just to my association with James Summerton initially is, you know, he and I had a couple cordial Twitter DMs um, way back a few years ago as he was growing as a content creator. Um, this is something that I do fairly regularly like I, I have a lot of different you know DMs and messages and associations with a lot of you know queer folks in the YouTube community and a few other folks I, I try my best to um, be at the very least cordial or even create like uh, friendships or relationships professional relationships um, with uh, other people here on YouTube because I think that that's important to do uh, not only for just like career-wise stuff but I think you know I am someone who talks about you know trying to create collective action who tries to talk about trying to uplift other marginalized voices and to work with other marginalized voices and so for me I try to you know reach out and be like hey I, I like your work let's you know talk how you doing let's can we collaborate or can we, you know, buttress each other up? Like, just trying to do that work. I think that's important part to do, not only as a, just a creator generally, but especially in our sort of, like, sphere of uh, talking about, like, marginalized queer issues, LGBTQ issues, um, left uh, leftist issues, that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, I had a few DMs uh, in that way. And then I also, you can even see evidence of this in some of my videos that are still up, and I've, I've tried to go back and delete some of them because um, it's just made me uncomfortable uh, having him in my videos. But in a few of my videos, I have um, said, hey, you should check out this video by James Summer. Uh, because I think it's good and it's a, on a related topic to whatever I'm talking about in this video. James Summerton pointed out in his own video on Disney, which is linked below, this era for Disney continued well beyond the Hayes Code. Again, this is something that I tried to do in a lot of my videos. I tried to prop up other creators' works and sort of cite them or point uh, other people towards them uh, to help uh, other creators, you know, get audience. And again, start connecting people in my audience to their audience and, you know, getting people to like intermingle um, and, and, and learn from other people. But side myself because I think that's an important thing to do. I, I try to do that all the time and James was someone who uh, I tried to do that with. Um, I tried to, I, I put it, several of his uh, videos, uh, just citations to his videos or, or sort of calls to action to go and check out his videos in my videos. And so that's sort of where we were at. We never were like super close or had like long talks. It was very, um, very cordial uh, and very like, you know, one-off sort of things like he did a quote read in uh, one of my videos and things like that. At a certain point, and I have to be kind of careful here because, you know, I, I do have an NDA with Nebula so there's only so much 
much I can particularly say. Um, but at one point, you know, I, I knew he was aiming to get on Nebula, and I was on Nebula myself uh, at that time, so I wanted to be able to, to, to you know, help that. So I, something I spoke about uh, publicly elsewhere, I believe he mentioned in one of his videos that he was uh, looking to get on Nebula or something, and it wasn't the left on red line that he had in one of his videos. He said, I le Nebula left me on red at one point. Um, so it was distinctly before that, but he sort of mentioned something about Nebula somewhere. I forget exactly the context. And so I uh, actually reached out to him and said, hey, there's this Discord server uh, that, you know, Nebula folks are on. It's a Discord server that has nothing to do with Nebula, but, the, you know, there's just, it's a creator. Uh, so it was a creator Discord. It doesn't even exist anymore. I don't think I haven't been on there in forever. It may still or not. Uh, but anyways, at the time, it was like, oh, there's Nebula folks on there that I know, you know, be on here. It's a nice place to connect with other people. I got on there. And so I got him an invite to that server and uh, said, you know, Nebula folks are on there, connect with them. Um, and to my knowledge, he never did. And then what upset me later on is him saying, you know, uh, Nebula left me on red uh, in, in a video, implying that he had reached out to Nebula and never heard anything back. I can't speak to what actually happened between him and Nebula. Uh, I do know a little bit more about that story, but again, there's uh, an NDA. Um, but from what I can tell you uh, publicly is that like, I know that he did not reach out to anyone at Nebula through that Discord server that I intentionally set him up to to go and, and see. Whether or not he reached out to them in other forms or venues or things like that, I, I cannot say for numerous different reasons. But my goal was um, overall to, you know, try to help him get on Nebula because I, I certainly want to, you know, I want to queer up Nebula. Nebula is already very queer. It has a bunch of LGBTQ folks on it, um, but I, I want to always make it queer. That is always my goal. I am here to make things that I'm a part of as queer as they possibly can be because um, I is something that is very uh, personal to me, and I and I liked James's work um, at the time, and and wanted to to you know help him. That was something that he was interested in, and I've done that for other creators beyond James. It wasn't just James specifically. So when he said that Nebula left me on red, um, I got kind of upset at that, but I, I let it go. Um, you know, I never said anything publicly about that, but it was sort of like a sort of made me glance sideways at him, um, for sure. And then what really annoyed me was he did a tweet, and this is sort of what sparked off the, the sort of, s the stuff that he was sort of apologizing me for, was he did a tweet that was, um, I'm paraphrasing here, I may have it saved somewhere, and I'll po pop it up on, on screen if I have it, um, but he said something along the lines of, you know, Nebula, uh, does not have any queer content on it, and, you know, it's, it's, it's upsetting that Nebula is not interested in talking to me. It was something, it's something along those lines. Um, which I got upset about, um, and I know several other queer creators on Nebula got upset. I'm not going to name them because it's not for me to tell their story, but I know that other queer creators on Nebula were upset by that because, like, there are numerous queer creators on Nebula. Um, you know, there, there's not just me. There's Abigail Thorne. There's Princess Weeks. There's Maggie Mae Fish. There's, there's, there's a ton of queer people on the Cat Black. And also, this is not for me to get upset about, but he replied to a tweet that also implied that Nebula didn't have any black content creators on the platform, which, again, I cannot speak for black content creators on Nebula, but I do know black content creators on Nebula who were upset by that. You know, I, I was upset at that and, you know, blame my, my neurodivergent brain, um, but I was sort of like, no, that's not cool. Um, because in my mind, it's like he has a fairly large LGBTQ audience, and if he's out there saying, you know, oh, Nebula doesn't have queer audiences, that's to me saying, like, you are, you are, you are erasing that we exist on that platform, and you are turning your, your queer audience against a platform that is helping to buttress up queer people. I mean, like, Nebula is literally paying for a large part of my sci-fi film identities. This is before that, but, like, they're, they're, they, they have been doing a lot of work to prop up queer voices in many ways, along with many other uh, communities' voices to, um, you know, that I can't speak for, but, you know, I, I know that that's something that is part of their goal. And so to, to take your audience and say Nebula is, is not listening to queer people, when there are queer people on that platform, it's it's harming us like that's 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 directly harming queer people in my opinion because you're saying they don't have me on there and thereby it's not a queer platform and thereby like harming the queer people that are on that platform by turning your queer audience potentially against that platform that you know helps pay our bills helps to fund us helps to uplift lift us so that's that upset me uh, i did a tweet on that and i tried my best to not be like you know, confrontational, like, fuck James Summerton. In fact, I believe I did a second tweet off of that, and again, I'll put this here if I can find it, um, where I literally said, like, this is, this, this is not me hating on James. I like his work, but this tweet ain't it, <laughs> essentially. Um, and that's what upset me. Um, and so I was trying not to, like, attack James's work or, you know, him as a person, but to say this specific, um, this specific statement I find to be uh, harmful in a way.
And I also should say that I was not the only one to tweet about this. I know uh, Princess Weeks and a couple others who I won't name because I haven't got permission to say their name in this video and I don't want to drag them into all of this stuff without their permission. Um, but I do know Princess Weeks and she has said it's okay I say this. Uh, also made a tweet uh, about James Somerton uh, related to this issue along with a couple others. After that kind of blew up a little bit on Twitter, James then went on to a live stream on his channel where he then went on to frame the discussion as if it was mainly about kind of where I believe the impetus for his initial tweets are coming from, which is him feeling that he wasn't able to get on Nebula, which bothered me in a few different ways because one, as I said, I had positioned him to be able to talk to folks on Nebula and then him saying Nebula left me unread, which I am, again, I can only say so much, but I am dubious about. Have issues with how Nebula not how Nebula is run in, in total, but how their um, recruitment is run, I guess would be the way of saying it. Um, I don't think it's done. I, I don't think it's it goes against the way I kind of think things should be. I'm a, I'm a big believer in democratization, um, which is one of the reasons I do like YouTube, where, you know, anyone can make it big on YouTube if, you know, they hit the right thing at the right time. Um, it's a big reason I'm a proponent of self-publishing for writers. Um, big fan of um, independent artists on Twitter and Tumblr. Um, and, you know, independent film, obviously. I've started an in, starting an independent production company. And so gatekeepers, I have a problem with gatekeepers, people who are kind of like, you're not in the club, and so we're going to ignore you, ignore that you exist, um, which is apparently how Nebula works. And so when I saw this live stream going up, I was actually out with a friend at that moment, and I decided to just like jump in the chat very briefly to be like, hey, do, do we need to air this publicly? Can we talk about this privately? Because like... I would much rather talk about this privately, especially because like the issue to me wasn't that he was criticizing Nebula, which he's totally fair and fine to do. Like he's allowed to criticize Nebula. Like I appreciate Nebula. Nebula is a platform that I think is very supportive of me, many queer voices and marginalized voices, but like he's allowed to criticize that uh, Nebula if he disagrees with me. And like, I'm not here to tell him he, his opinion that he should have on Nebula. My issue was specifically him saying that there was no queer exclusive content on Nebula, which is demonstrably false in numerous ways, especially in the ways that it says like, it implies that there's no queer creators making content about queer stuff on Nebula, which I do myself and numerous others do. But to give James credit, when he does see me like jump into the chat there, he does say that no one should harass me or bother me. So I will give him that credit, at least at this point in the narrative. We'll get to stuff in a minute. So I don't like that. Some people um, on Twitter um, have taken it personally. And I have, oh, Jesse's here. Um, I'm sorry for interrupting your night, Jesse. I know that you were out with friends. I, I'm just trying to, obviously I, I, Nebula won't work with me. So I'm just going by what I've been told by people and how it's, um, what I've sussed out from the information that I'm able to get. Um, Oh, I can completely understand why you're frustrated. That's why I, um, I, I'm especially really sorry that people have been coming at you on Twitter and stuff. That is ridiculous, and they should not be doing that at all. And I know that I said some things on Twitter that in my haze of just anger tweeting or fr frustration tweeting, really, um weren't worded the best it would it would have helped had i had nick and his uh public relations brain with me <laughs> and so i am appreciative of him as he does in that clip saying like no one should come at me uh because i was actually facing a lot of people coming at me at that moment which was um really stressful and frustrating and was like it was just it was a whole thing um, so I do at least appreciate that part of it, but that clip also showcases my, my larger issue here because he frames at the start of the clip, 
uh, that the issue apparently was me and other creators like Princess Weeks getting upset at him criticizing Nebula and the way people get on their platform and then kind of dismissing like the way he worded it as like, oh, I could have worded it better. When in actuality, my issue wasn't with him criticizing how people got get onto Nebula. He is allowed to have his own criticisms um, of Nebula and the platform. I may disagree. I may side-eye that criticism considering what I knew uh, have been going on elsewhere. Uh, but but he's allowed to have that criticism. But my issue was the thing that he was kind of dismissing here, which was like him saying that like queer people weren't on Nebula as well as what Princess Weeks was pointing out, which was that, you know, him also saying that there weren't black creators on Nebula as well. And him never really taking ownership of that being the problem. And then on top of that, my issue was that he was doing this uh, in a live stream to then like go out to his audience to make it seem like, oh, he was the one being attacked and criticized and, and sort of like being able to frame it as like, oh, look at me, I was I was attacked in this situation and only kind of changed his, his tune a little bit when I jumped into the chat. Instead of, uh, you know, talking to us behind the scenes, because I literally messaged him in a DM at that point saying, can we talk about this privately? Like, please don't like air this all publicly right now, can we talk privately? And then if you still wanna air it publicly, like fine, but like, is this is this what we wanna be doing right now? Like just airing all this in front of in front of people and, and just making it potentially worse and escalating it because I was getting stressed out because I'm like, if you escalate to this, the audience is gonna get more people coming after me. So like, it was just it was just the thing that like, I don't think was good for either of us. Um, and, and so that was what was like frustrating me in that moment. So he never responded to that at all. He just did the live stream. And honestly, it just kind of like caused me to have like just an anxiety attack at that point. So I was just like, I kind of stepped away from it. But then something interesting happened in that live stream that I wasn't involved in at all, which was then other creators like Jenny Nicholson and Sarah Z came into the chat to discuss James's, uh, the accusations of plagiarism that had been leveled against James from smaller creators at that point. This was well before the H Bomber Guy video. This was from other creators that H Bomber Guy does talk about in his video um, that uh, Jenny Nicholson and Sarah Zed were discussing. And they directly confronted James with those uh, accusations in this live stream. And Sarah and Jenny, and this is not me saying this in any way, but Sarah and Jenny um, put forth the, uh, the theory that that potentially the reason that James was not on Nebula was because of these accusations of plagiarism that were out there. Again, not me saying that. I am not speaking for Nebula or as a representative of Nebula, just presenting what Sarah and Jenny stated. But if you're looking for the clips of where H Bomber Guy got those live stream um, um, clips that he uses in his video, uh, this is where that's from, from this live stream. And that's the thing on Twitter, I, I did speak with Jesse um, on Twitter. We did have a back and forth. Um, like I did address the problem with the initial tweet. I apologized for it. The people showing up in the stream seem to just be coming in to try to make me look bad. And like, as I've said, there were accusations of plagiarism and the two that were the one legitimate one i just squashed right away and just cut the whole section out of the video and re-uploaded the video uh the second one wasn't actually plagiarism because i had gotten permission from the author but having him uh it quoted that it was based on his book in the uh description of the video wasn't enough for some people so i took the video down put the video back up um and then there was the silly one about the Hannibal video, um, which I talked about before, but it's, um, it was, um, a younger YouTuber. She made a mistake. It was, you know, she and I, she and I spoke to each other and, you know, she apologized and everything and there's nothing there, no kind of drama or anything there. James, I think you're missing the point with what Sarah was saying about plagiarism. It's not about whether or not you did it. It's just an explanation of why a corporation might not want to work with you. And so I was watching the live stream, saw the accusations of plagiarism, and 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 I was upset at the live stream just generally because it just sort of was like, oh, I'm being attacked. And so from there, I, I just sort of like, fuck it, I'm out. And, and honestly, it caused me a lot of stress that day. I was uh, out, which actually out with a friend. Um, at that time and I was just like I have to go home because I, I just my brain is not here right now and so from there 
to my knowledge, and this is where things are going to get interesting with, with James's story, and, and so I want to try and make sure I, I, I'm specific here. The next thing that I saw from him was him posting on his community tab where he said, quote, Despite my attempts to be a positive voice for the community across social media, I see now that the queer community is not a community. A minor disagreement about the activities of a company can turn into death threats, harassment, and a glut of emails sent to my business email after I set my Twitter to private, threatening me even more. One even said they'd accuse me of sexual harassment online to, quote, kill your channel. When things started to calm down a bit today, another person, a major YouTuber's producer, began fanning the flames again saying that we need to believe the person harassing me, i.e. the sexual assault threat, and when made aware of how wrong she was, switched tactics to try and dig up several year old claims of plagiarism from summer 2020, which have been long since dealt with and clarified multiple times. I feel absolutely wrecked by all of this. I spent half of my day dealing with the police and the other half being attacked on Twitter. I've tried to keep my head up, but now I feel like I'm drowning. And he also intonated something very similar to this on Twitter where he stated that he had uh, gotten uh, emails that saying that someone would falsely accuse him of sexual assault. Um, and he intonated that this was a fan of a larger content creator, though he did not name which larger content creator it was. Um, at this point, uh, I saw that and was like, oh my God, he's getting death threats. Uh, he's, you know, getting false sexual assault claims. And I assumed, cause he did not name the creator that these supposed death threats were coming from. I assumed he meant from uh, a larger uh, creator than me, like Jenny Nicholson or Sarah Zed, who had talked to him in the live stream. And that's not to say, I think like their audiences are somehow more toxic or anything than mine. My just assumption was that like they have larger audiences. So the chances of that being the case was more likely the case. Um, but in response to that, I did put out a tweet where I said, no one should be harassing James Summerton. I think that that's awful and I condemn that. Uh, if anyone's doing that for my audience, like stop. So I, I put out that tweet to expressly state that uh, and make that clear. It's like, I did not want anything to escalate further from my audience. And I was trying to do at least what I could, even though at the time I did not assume that it was from my audience. These are also both the points where he intonated that he had gotten the cops involved in some way, shape, or form, that again, he did not intonate uh, with who uh, the cops had uh, been contacted about. But to go back to his community post, what there was a few things that bothered me with that. And to be fair, if he was receiving death threats and things like that, then I get that like the framing is not going to be like, he's not going to be in a positive mood to frame these things. And that's fair. But it did sort of frustrate me like that this all started off with his tweet being like, oh, there are no queer people on Nebula. There's no queer focused content on Nebula. And then his next sort of post after all of this stuff was then to like escalate it to like, oh, I've been receiving death threats. And oh, the queer community is not a community. No one cares about me. Uh, when I like repeatedly like said like, hey, like I support your content. I just didn't like this, this tweet. And also to say like, please don't erase the rest of the queer community. And, and, and in that, uh, message, he says like the queer community is not a community and, and sort of framing other queer creators who have been talking about him as like the villains who are like trying to come at him and attack him. And I found that framing, uh, I, it, it, it really did anger me that that was the framing of like of that moment. And again, I get like if if this is where he was at, if he was receiving death threats throughout all of this, like I get that that's not going to be the kindest. He's not going to be in the most charitable mood. But like considering where this started from of like me saying, please don't like erase queer creators, something that he acknowledged was wrong to have said for his next thing to be like, oh, the queer community is not a community bothers me. Um, and then the rest of that community tab, uh, I won't get further into that, but like the producer that he's talking about uh, and the accusation of plagiarism that come up uh, are from H Bomber Guy's team. Um, and obviously we know where, where that eventually uh, led to, um, but it was him sort of like dismissing again the, the claims of plagiarism and, and then sort of turning it into, you know, I'm, I've been attacked, which is interesting to me. And again, I want to be like, it is quite possible that these things happened, um, that he did receive these death threats. But as H Bomber Guy pointed out in his own video, James did have a propensity to when someone accused him of plagiarism, um, to him turning to where they're attacking me. And so what I have to say now, looking back on this, and this is not me saying that it didn't happen, but something that I have to be like, my, my trust in him due to this whole situation with the plagiarism and all these other things that H. Bomberg I talked about in my own situation with him, uh, considering, you know, the Discord server and Nebula and other, other stuff, um, I have to be like, is that true? Or are you just framing it this way to then be able to be like, oh, I'm being attacked right now, and then sort of be able to, like, turn the audience to sympathy for you instead of actually focusing on the, the, the like, issues that you are that you are being accused of. And instead of being like, oh, I'm being attacked. And again, I'm not saying that that isn't the case. I have no proof of that, but like, 
it, it's just something that like I just have to say as someone who like has has lost trust in him because of all this other situation. Now it's to retroactively look back and be like, I don't I, I don't know if I can trust what you're saying here. Then from there, Nick, his co-writer, uh, did a tweet that said, and I have this one saved, he says, uh, he, meaning James, didn't comment on any one individual, he, meaning James, pointed out a shitty business practice used by a media hosting platform. They're referring to Nebula and, uh, you know, how people get onto the Nebula platform, which again was sort of my bother being like, I tried to set him up to get on Nebula. But regardless, uh, I tweeted back at that comment because I was saying, no, the problem wasn't him talking about Nebula. Like, he has every right to criticize Nebula. I'm not here to call him out for for uh, having issues with how Nebula conducts their business. Like, that is that is a totally fair criticism for him to have. And I'm, I'm not calling anyone out on that. That's, that's for them to discuss. But what I wanted to put the point back on was like, no, it is not that he was talking about Nebula in terms of like, oh, you know, I, they left me on red or whatever. The issue was that he was saying that there weren't queer people on Nebula or that they didn't have queer focused content was his specific wording. And so I responded to Nick's tweet by saying, no, this is not what happened. I like you both. Again, me pointing out that I like Nick, I like James, I wasn't trying to attack them, but please stop changing the narrative. The issue was not that you criticized Nebula, the issue is that you actively erased many the issue is that you actively erased many queer people on nebula making queer content specifically because james felt left out that was the tweet to which at that point james then uh sent another tweet quote tweeting me at that point he had locked his account due to all the other stuff going on um around this time he had locked his account so i couldn't even see that someone sent it to me but he said first her followers send me threats of all kind for which the police are now involved and now she's setting 43,000 of them after nick uh, referring to the 43,000 Twitter followers that I had at the time. The cops have asked that I not speak with anyone involved until they investigate. Can someone tell her to realize what she's doing? This is where I learned that the creator that James had been referring to when he had said someone in their audience had sent him false sexual assault allegations and or death threats and he had had to call the cops on them was in fact me. Um, so that's when I first learned about it, when someone sent me this tweet from his locked account. Um, at that point, I did send a DM to James, um, saying, you know, can we work it out? What's going on? Can we, can we stop this back and forth? To which he said, the police told me I shouldn't talk to you. And I'm like, okay, well, uh, I sent him another DM, like, okay, like, know that I'm here to talk if you want to. And that was kind of the end of it. And that's the last I've ever had any direct contact, contact with, um, with James. Um, at that point, I did start to get a lot of comments from his own audience saying that I had attacked a gay creator um, and was like sicking people after a gay creator and also implying that I had been the one to keep him from getting on Nebula. Like I got several comments uh, of that nature uh, on my videos and on my channel and in my uh, tweets and DMs. Uh, nothing uh, that amounted to like death threats, but like people who had shifted the narrative from what they had learned from James to be from what I originally had tried to be, be about, which was like, please don't erase queer people on Nebula because by saying like, you know, queer, Nebula doesn't have queer content. Um, to uh, somehow me having gone after him as a gay man which is weird <laughs> considering I'm a trans woman and part of the LGBTQ community. And not to say that trans women and gay men can't, you know, send people to each other, but like, you know, I hope I've made clear that like, I'm not here to attack gay men. I consider gay men to like, cis gay men of all kinds to be part of the gay community and, and a valuable and lovely and amazing part of the gay community. So like that really sucked and it sucked to see that narrative be spun um, about me. So yeah, it, it just, it, it sucked, especially since I believe at that time we had uh, comparable, if uh, not, I think you might even had a slightly bigger audience at that time. Um, but it was sort of framed that like, I was the one in power there sending other people to attack him and Nick, um, which was frustrating because I had expressly stated for that not to be the case. This is not to say that I don't think that it's ever possible that someone in my audience might have gotten angry at him and went and sent him death threats. Like, it is very much possible. That was not m my intention. I Hopefully I made very clear that that was not my intention and that no point was James willing to talk to me directly about that uh, before or after supposedly the cops got involved. Despite us having had, you know, a few amicable DMs back and forth. So it wasn't like I had never contacted him, was trying to get in touch with him. Like, we, we, had Twitter DMs, we, we could have discussed with each other and he even reached out to say like, oh, I can't talk to you because of the cops. So that is basically the situation to my mind, uh, at least in terms of how I uh, think about it now. And so at the end of the day, what I was hurt by was the initial comments of like, Nebula doesn't have queer focused content. 
as well as the framing of me as the aggressor in the situation to the point where like his audience came at me um, quite directly. And, you know, that's not to say that maybe my audience didn't go after him. I do not know. I have no proof of that. And that's kind of what I want to get into where I want where I want to discuss um, James James's apology to me in his video. Uh, I have two things that I want to talk about with James's apology specifically. And uh, they're uh, and they're kind of two different things. So I want to focus first on the apology itself, and then kind of focus on the second thing that I have an issue with that will lead into a, like a larger discussion on the rest of his apology video. And this is me uh, in editing mode, and I think I just want to put his entire uh, apology to me here, just so that to give context for what we're going to talk about in a second. And uh, I'm going to jump in after this clip uh, to say something from editing mode before I get into what I said uh, and recorded earlier, um, where I had had some distance from his response. But we'll play the clip now. Um, I'd also like to extend a personal apology to Jesse Earl, better known as Jesse Gender. Out of everyone that I spoke to who was also a YouTuber, Jesse was by far the kindest person. I think Jesse might be one of the kindest people I've ever met or ever encountered. We never actually met in person. Because of my hot-headedness, I drew her into just this anger spiral of mine that was unwarranted and absolutely ruined a possible friendship. Jessie was actually doing her best to kind of mitigate my frustration and, and everything and, and uh, at that moment, and I just wasn't allowing her to do that. And I really, truly, honestly want to apologize to her for that. Again, if, if you ever get the chance to speak with Jessie one-on-one, -on -one, or if you have gotten the chance, you'll know just how nice she is and how kind. And I was a, a real asshole for uh, dragging her into my reactionary, unwarranted frustration. We obviously, we haven't spoke since all of that happened. Um, but Jesse, if you are watching this video, um, I do want you to know that I am honestly sorry for that. I hope truly, honestly, I hope everything goes as well as possible for you because you deserve all of it. There was a misunderstanding between Jesse and I, um, after that happened that I do want to clear up where... Someone who at least claimed to be a fan of Jesse's, you know, did an internet and threatened to kill me, which is, you know, being a person on the internet, death threats are unfortunately not uncommon. At the time, though, uh, I was in a very panicked state, and so I did report it to the police. I did not report Jesse to the police, which is the misunderstanding that people um, came away with. I did not report Jesse to the police. I would have no reason to do that. And it did end up that this person had a prior record with the police um, of violent acts, and they actually lived quite near me. Um, so the police took it very seriously. They took it so seriously that they implored me not to speak to Jesse, which I took their advice on which I shouldn't have, honestly. I should have at least clarified to Jessie what was going on and not just left her hanging. And so I want to, again, apologize to Jessie for that. But in that state, I listened to the police, which is, you know, maybe not the best decision all the time because the cops don't usually have the best interests of people at heart. So, Jessie, I want to apologize for that and everything else that happened. Completely understand why you would not want to speak to me ever again, but I just want you to know that I am sorry. Now, having watched the clip, and maybe this is me just being overly empathetic watching this footage, uh, but I want to say this up front before I get into the next part that I recorded earlier, which I recorded with some distance from having watched it this morning, um, which is to say, like, this does come across as very sincere, and, I, and, I, and, and it might even be completely sincere. I don't know. Maybe it's just me being too empathetic uh, because what I'm going to say next is going to kind of like actually talk earnestly about like 
what I feel about this and I, I and I stand by all of it, but like there's just a part of me that wrestles with it because it's like it does feel earnest and I want and I want to believe that. Um, but as you'll see, I, it's difficult for me to do that for what I will now cut back to. Looking at his apology and what he says to me specifically and about the situation, I, I have very mixed feelings on that part of it. And I think it comes down to just the lack of ability to trust him uh, at this stage of the game. And it's something that he readily admits to uh, in the video that his trust, uh, people's trust in him has been destroyed. Not just because of the situation I just outlined, but because of the stuff with the plagiarism and him having plagiarized from people. Like, it's difficult to trust him on anything he says because of that and how he has framed uh, accusations of plagiarism before. And that kind of goes into this. Like, he has been accused of plagiarism before this, and every time he did, he always claimed, like, oh, they're coming to attack me. Uh, it, like, H-Bomber guy talked about this in his video. Like, when someone said, you plagiarized my video, James Summerton framed it as, like, they, they are harassing me when that was not the case. They were literally just saying, you plagiarized from me, which was what happened. And again, check out H-Bomber guys for the details on that. So when he discusses the situation, I, I, it just leads me to question whether it is true or not. And I'm not here to say that it isn't true, but I, I just don't have any, I just don't have any ability to trust that it is. And the questions that I have are like, did you actually receive death threats from my audience? Because the, the thing that I remember was that you said, like, someone's going to falsely accuse you of sexual assault from my audience. And then it became death threats from my audience. And, and I had assumed that the false accusation of, um, of sexual assault was the thing that you went to the police for. At least that's my remembrance of the timeline events, but I have no proof of that because I wasn't w with James at those times. Um, but that was my remembrance of what he had called the cops on. So he now frames it here that it was the death threat. So like there's an inconsistency in my mind there. But again, that might just be because I don't know the full timeline events from his point of view. So that may actually be the case, but that's like something that weirds me out a little bit. And then also the fact that he has, you know, called people rightfully calling out his plagiarism harassment before makes me then wonder, like, were these death threats that he was getting from, supposedly from my audience also real? And I don't know. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say that it didn't happen. Like, cause if it did, it's fucking awful. I condemn that. So I, I want to be very clear on that, but I, I, I just can't trust him that that's the case because of everything that has gone on. Um, and it sucks because I want to, I want to believe that he is being honest and sincere in, in his presenting of his view of what happened. Um, but I, I just can't. And again, like in my mind, and the reason that I have to like present it this way and the reason, and it just leads me down to like other questions as well of like, he states also at one point that someone tried to falsely accuse him of sexual assault, um, which is weird to me because he says it was a woman who did that and he is a publicly known gay man. So it's just this weird thing of like, why would someone falsely accuse him of sexual assault in my name if they also know that he's a gay man? That just seems like something weird to do, to to, to, to have uh, someone like say, ah, I'm a woman, I'll falsely accuse this gay man of sexual, it just feels weird. And like, again, this is like, not something I wanna go down the rabbit hole of, but it just like leads me to be like, that just feels like a weird, story for someone to have come at you with if 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 it was true and it like also leans into this whole thing of like the biases in our society of like women making false accusations against men and it feels like it plays into that but it, it and it's just like it just if it's a made-up story that just it, 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 it fits into that but if it's real then it's like that's what a weird thing for someone to have done um, not even just like the part of it being like death threats fucking are awful and weird that anyone would do that, but like this specifically is an accusation. And so it just, it sends me into the spiral of like, I don't know what to believe in this situation. And I guess what I have to say is like, before I could even begin to think of accepting an apology, um, what I would want is to see the police report that he says that he filed. Because if he did file a police report to, I, I don't know how it works in Canada. I know he's in Canada. Uh, in America, I know that if to file a false police report comes with a lot of uh, legal uh, problems. So uh, I don't know if that's the same in Canada, but I would presume that would be the case. So if he did indeed file a police report, as he says that he did, um, then I would like to see that because that would then give me some semblance of proof um, that 
you know, he did receive death threats and did go to the police to to act on it. Um, you know, whether or not I agree with going to the police to to, uh, to involve a queer person like myself is uh, good or safe. That's a different discussion. Uh, I don't. I'm not someone who particularly likes the police, especially when it comes to them dealing with marginalized groups. Um, as a trans woman myself, um, but you know, if you are receiving death threats, I, I understand why that that is the impulse to to do. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know get too uppity about that. What I would just ask is like if if what I would want is to see the police report because if he did if I get to see that, then I can at least be like okay. The death threats that he says happened, uh, you know, did did credibly happen um, because he did file a police report. And to file a false police report would probably come with um, with um, backlash from from like legal legal problems if, if they were indeed false. So basically, I'm just asking is like, I would like to see the police report. And that's the only way I could even begin to accept the apology, um, because then I can have some level of trust in what he is saying is the truth. Until that point, I, I really just can't. And I want to. I really, really want to. Um, but I just can't. And that sucks to say. I, I hope that doesn't make me like a bad person uh, to want proof of that. But like, it's just where I have to be emotionally. Um, uh, and then, you know, from there, I can kind of better judge my emotions of like the sincerity of his apology. Because like watching the video, it's like he may be sincere. And if he is being sincere, there's a part of me that's like, okay, let me let me wrestle with that um, and come to a determination about how I feel um, about it. Uh, but uh, but I, I I really can't until I, I I can even feel like I can trust the narrative on that point. Um, so I guess that's kind of where I fall fall on that aspect of things. Um, you know, James can release the police report or not. Uh, ultimately, I'm not like gung ho on like oh, I need to see the police report. I, 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 at the end of the day, it doesn't really. I, I'm not. I don't need. I don't need to be apologized to. I have tried to move on from James, and the only reason I'm making this video now is because he directly ta directly talked about me uh, in his video. Um, so I feel like I have a I have a some and I and I've made videos about him. So I feel like I have some level of a duty to talk about to at least offer up where I'm at on that because I'm I'm involved um, at this point and I have discussed him. If I had been silent before. Uh, then it would have been conspicuous if I hadn't said anything now, especially since I'm directly called out um, within within the body of his his apology video. So um, yeah, I I don't need to see the police report, but if 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 the apology is meant in earnest um, and he does wish to 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 do that, um, that's what I would need. But again, like I don't really need it. Um, it's not something that I'm particularly seeking because, frankly, I've, I, I want to just move beyond James. Like, I, I have no desire to associate with him in any way, shape, or form. Um, I have no desire to watch his work. I have no desire to platform his work. I have no desire to just even be involved with him in any way. Um, so I don't really need it, but that's, that's what I would need. Um, but this, that leads me kind of to my, uh, to my next point because the last thing that I want to talk about here is how he positions his apology to me within the video because his apology to me is within the first uh, five minutes of the video. And watching his video, uh, which is supposedly a, an apology, what strikes me, and again, I'm going to leave the, the larger analysis of this to other folks to go into because this one's I've talked about it enough. Um, so there are other things that he... Uh, he can talk about this with other people as as uh, as needed, but to, from my point of view, it's like the thing that he needs to apologize for is the plagiarism and to take responsibility for that, acknowledge the harm he done he has done, and and try to accept responsibility for that. And what bothered me in the video is that like there's some level of that of him like saying I did plagiarize, but a lot of it is him trying to make himself understood about why he plagiarized and to like make it come off as like not that bad or at least present like the timeline of events and I get the desire to want to be understood about why it happened and and quite possibly everything that he says is true it, it may be the case that everything he said in the video is true I'm not here to even question that but it's like the point of an apology is not to is not to like make yourself understood but to directly state like this is the harm I caused uh, speak like name people in the video and t so your audience knows specifically who you have harmed rather than keep it behind the scenes um, and, 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 and focus on that. But in the video, repeatedly, he, he only names me and I believe um, Vito, the gay man who died from HIV who made the celluloid closet that he directly talks about him plagiarizing. So the only people he names are myself and uh, someone who is dead. Um, and he doesn't name anyone else. 
um, of the newest people that we do know he has plagiarized from. And it, it sucks that he doesn't name them. And then the other thing, too, is that um, he spends a large portion of the video trying to talk about his plans going forward. And, like, look, you know, I don't really want to see James do any more YouTube videos. I have no interest in his movies. But, like, that's me. That You can make your own determination on that. Um, that's for everyone else to sort out their feelings on him as a creator. The problem that I have is, like, if this is your apology video, why are you pitching your, your movies that you want to make or the videos that you want to do or your Patreon that you want support from uh, that you still want people to go and support you on? Like, all those are irrelevant to an apology video and just feel like you're trying to turn the narrative into talking about what you want to still do. And it's like, I'm not saying you necessarily can't do that. Again, it'll be up to other folks to determine whether that is the case or not. But to my mind, to be able to do that, you need to focus on the apology first. And that's, and this video did not focus on the apology. Like he mentions his, his dead mother um, in there as well, which again, like that sucks. And I, I don't want to ever like say that that's not something he shouldn't talk about, but it's like, it feels like it's not the point of a video where you should be apologizing like to like make people feel bad that your mother died. And like, again, I'm not saying that people shouldn't feel bad that your mother died and it sucks. I, my, I've had many family members die. Um, and so I know how much that hurts, um, but it doesn't feel like it's pertinent uh, to an apology focus. You know what I mean? Also, it should be said that while he does claim to have gotten accepted apologies from creators that he's reached out to, I can't confirm from anybody that that is actually the case. But there have been creators that he has reached out to who have not accepted his apology publicly, and also other creators like the amazing Alexander Avila, who H Bomber Guy proved James Somerton had plagiarized from, who have not received any contact at all and are still blocked by James Somerton. Additionally, James mentions that he did have misinformation in his video, but he doesn't really accept full responsibility for it, and he doesn't ever mention Todd in the Shadows videos about his misinformation. Which gets me back to, like, me um, in this video, where it's like, he names me in the first five minutes, but the larger issue is his plagiarism, because at the end of the day, like, yeah, we had our Twitter spats, and there were death threats involved, and the cops involved, and, like, that sucks, but, like, I'm surviving, and I've moved beyond it, but, like, the people who were plagiarized from faced more, like, demonstrable harm than I did, uh, just having to deal with, like, really stressful uh, emotional Twitter BS. And I'm not trying to downplay my own stuff that I had to deal with, but, like, to my mind, like, the plagiarism is what people care about. Like, yeah, people, like, uh, people were, like, curious about what happened between the two of us, for sure. But, like, I don't think that people were really upset about our situation, right? Um, the thing that people want to hear about is the plagiarism. And, and it just doesn't feel like he's fully reckoning with that. And it feels weird to me to have been the person that he talks about the most, most directly um, first, and then not do that for the rest of the people. And it just, it, 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 is it, it, am I just being used to like be the thing that you are talking about to apologize for and to make yourself look good because you're like apologizing to me and saying like she's the nicest person I've ever met um which like we didn't have that like I, I'm glad that he got the impression I'm a nice person but we didn't have like super close conversations so like that feels a bit familiar I, I don't know I, I guess I appreciate the compliment um but it, it feels weird to like apologize to me and and then talk about like the death threats because I'm like is is it just a way to mention the death threat? It's just I don't know. It just it feels a little bit icky to me that like I'm positioned first um, and the only one named besides a dead person, rather than like specifically talking about the plagiarism issue, which I I think is the larger issue, and I wasn't even the one plagiarized from at any point, at least to my knowledge. At the end of the day, just to wrap out here, like I I don't need the apology. I guess I, I, I do appreciate the attempt, but like I, it's hard for me to accept it at this point because of the lack of trust that I have in him. So on that front, that's where I'm at on the apology. I don't need it, but, and, and I guess if this is sincere, like I appreciate the effort, but I need a little bit more to be able to like fully be able to, 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 to think about even accepting it. Um, but even more importantly to me, beyond me, I, 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 I honestly think the, the stuff between the two of us is like, very minor <laughs> compared to the larger issue that like does not seem to be fully reckoned with um in his video and, and not in my mind uh properly framed and, and focused on um 
So that's that's where I'm at. Like, there's probably a lot more to discuss about the ins and outs of his apology. I'm not. I, I really don't have any desire to to dissect that anymore. And and frankly, unless unless he does wish to come forth with the um, the police report, I'm never going to talk about him again. I have no desire to talk about him again. But I again, just to finish off, like I I did feel that because he did talk about me, I needed to talk about not only the situation but my feelings around how he he brought it up. I guess on a last note uh, to James, if you are watching this. Um, what I will say is, uh, I hope I made my point clear about where I'm at between the two of us. Uh, but uh, I, I do hope on a personal level, like beyond professional career stuff, um, I, I, I wish you on just a human level, um, that you're okay and taking care of yourself. Um, I, I have no ill will towards you as a person, um, or really even ill will towards your career, even though I, I have no desire to see it <laughs> i have no desire to be involved in it or see it or or uh, be a, a consumer of it so um but uh but yeah i wish you as a person um good health um yeah uh with that said i hope you all my friends live long and prosper <laughs>